cool. All right, we're doing this shit, dude. We're on our way to motherfuck. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, okay. Take two. Oh, yeah, we in this fucking hoe right now in the car. This is Lose the Tempo. We're on our way to L.A. right now. Because, you know what? I'm spilling the beans. Zion Don is going to try to hop on on that open mic. And try to do a couple of bits one time. One time for the culture, man. I'm looking. I'm really hoping my boy Zion Don hops onto the stage and do some bits. Because I know he's always been saying that, oh, I got a couple of bits in my bag. And tonight we're about to find out. We're about to find out what Zion Don's been cooking with these bits, man. How are you, are you looking forward to this, dude? Um, yeah. Uh, I don't. Yeah, bro. Uh, I've been for a while, dog. For a while now, I've been jotting down just a bunch of thoughts, ideas, funny bit lines on my iPhone notes. So, like, I have a like a big ass long note of just a bunch of bit ideas and I have some things that are like kind of structured out but I've noticed that uh, if I write something out and then try to remember it verbatim like I don't sound natural like I sound like I'm I'm reading some shit so like when it comes to like performing and shit like that um, I just have ideas and little uh, taglines I know I needed hit but it's pretty much all going to be, like, off the dome shit with, like, you know, I'm going to make sure, like, I'm self-aware. Uh, I'm going to be calm. Hopefully, we'll see what the fuck happens. Uh, I'm going to try to interact with the audience. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to do it all. I'm going to try to do it all. We'll see what happens. I, I'm a roaster motherfucker, you know, like, <laughs> like, it's not that I'm going to roast that person. It's just that I have, like, a... A little scenario in the in my bit uh, that I that allows me to look for someone in the audience, you know. So uh, yeah, I know when I get there, I'll have to look for someone and try to make that shit funny. I'm really hoping you get the opportunity to do it, dude. Uh, we're going to the Eric Griffin show uh, and a couple other supporting acts as well. Not that not I'm familiar show, with, but uh, it's not his show. It's called like the the dirty 10 30 show or something like that uh but yeah eric griffin is one of the people in that show right on man you, you know when it comes to open mics if it was like at a edm festival i would have been down bro because i feel like i got some bits in the cut that's like very edm relatable specifically towards music producers so for sure like i definitely wouldn't have the balls that you have right now robert if it was like a different, a specific audience, like the ravers, or I feel like I could definitely be more comfortable with like trying shit out because I'm just a little bit more relatable with uh, that particular topic and the particular scenarios in that uh, culture. Uh, as opposed to just like comic in general, like you, you could just touch anything and you never know what the audience you're gonna be given. But like, for example, me throwing myself on an open mic, like at a music festival, at a rave. I kind of have an idea of the interest of the audience. I could, it's more of an advantage. You know what I'm saying? Way more of an advantage. So just do an open mic, especially like at a legend story at the comedy store in LA, dude. Um, now thinking in retrospect, dude, I, I'm, this will be fucking, this is big, bro, just for you to hop on over. I would think this would just be like a good opportunity for any comic just to bust like a, a bit or two up there, dude. And uh, that's really cool too as like as a music producer. DJ artist, podcaster, content creator, that you're gonna you're doing this as well, like comic. That's like aside from that, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, shit, dude. We might have a Zion Don set, aka special, along with that, bro. Sometime soon, and not just a DJ set. It's a fucking comedy stand-up special along with the set. That'd be pretty awesome. You ever thought about that? Um, not. Nah. Really, per se. So I'm not going to lie to you. Um, being a comedian isn't something I grew up dreaming about like that. Um, but I, I, I've learned to appreciate it a lot. Like, I, I guess I could say when I got late into my teens. So, like, when I got, like, 13, 14, 15 and whatnot is when I really started getting into comedy. My grandma showed me Gabriel Iglesias. 
and then showed me the uh, the dirt dirt guy, you know, and um, <laughs> facts. And then I started getting into podcasting with Joe Rogan, and you know, at first, I didn't know Joe Rogan was a podcast or was a comedian. I had solely knew him from Fear Factory. Yeah, I've always knew him uh, as the Fear Factory dude, bro. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when Fear Factor came out, I was in Hawaii. And that's when I got my introduction to Joe Rogan. And I remember being out there in Hawaii and just always wanting to do, like, some wild shit, like, in the, at the island. Like, there, there's a bunch of great places to go exploring with kids and whatnot. And, yeah, it's uh, looking at Joe Rogan. And then uh, transitioning into listening to him into podcasting and then getting to find out that, oh, uh, I'm the way I am because I'm a comedian. Like his persona, the way he is, he's like that because he's able to display his thoughts in a funny way and in a fucked up way at the same time. But like, that's just him. And like, I feel like, I like that about comedians, that they're able to be, like, whoever the fuck they are, because it's all in fun. It's all in being funny. I don't... They don't give a fuck if you're being mean or anything like that. If it's funny, it's funny. And I, I like that shit. And, um... Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of shit I want to get on stage and talk about that I wouldn't necessarily talk about uh, just with people on a one-on-one... -on -one. So, uh, yeah, I'm really interested to see what uh, what happens. And, you know, looking at a lot of the clips uh, from comedians when they talk about, you know, coming up in the comedy grind, doing all these venues, uh, uh, doing stand-up in all these particular cities, um, it sounds very similar to the EDM producer artist grind, bro, in terms of, like, they're required to sell a certain amount of tickets and bring a certain amount of hits and a lot of these uh, uh, establishments and how sometimes maybe like your time might get bumped down or maybe bumped back out or bumped b way back like late towards the end of the show. Maybe because you didn't even like do your due diligence of like making that trust with the promoter that you're bringing all these like uh, people to come out. Um, and not only that, like I could just only imagine how many people are just trying to get on the stage, you know, and do their thing. I mean, it just sounds all very similar to like the EDM producer grind because... Uh, I see it with music, you know, music producers like us. We go to these clubs. We want to do our thing, drop our set, drop our music, do our thing. But it's not just, not just uh, only us. It's a bunch of it's a it's a lot of people, and uh, I've always heard really good things about the comedy store as well in terms of like it being uh, the fucking place to kind of get like your name going. And I feel like there's also those places too in Indian market like. You know, if you were to play like uh like an academy or a time or an Avalon or uh anything of that sort like in LA, like that would be kind of like some somewhat sort of like a comedy store. Or actually a little bit better, like the Hollywood Palladium. Like I feel like for EDM producers, that's like kinda like similar to uh for us for the comedy stories to the comedians, but or maybe that's just like a weird analogy to put it, but um yeah, man, honestly, I can really relate to a lot of these comedians when they feel their frustrations about their particular industry and uh, the people that they deal with when it comes to the shows and uh, them dealing with other performers as well in their industry. You know, like the beef that they come across, it all just seems very, very similar to the stuff that we come across and other EDM producers come across when we hear about that shit. And uh, it's, it's not, it's a small world, world when it comes to the similarity of things. You're definitely right with comparing uh, comedy to EDM. You just actually on the floor, um, because, but uh, because it's it's all the same, right? It's all booking based. It's all gig based. If you really think about it, like it's all gig based. Like your name is big. If you're getting constantly, if you're getting constantly booked, that means you're getting constant exposure. That means you're working. You're grinding. And that means, you know, that that's the grind. That's the way of the grind, right? I like the fact that comedians look at their success in terms of ticket sales. I like that a lot. They they talk to each other as, oh, how many tickets did you sell? How many tickets did you sell? And 
that's cool because they're they're aware that oh that's how i know i'm succeeding is how many tickets can i sell whereas in edm for a dj you, that's not what you're what you want to necessarily care about a lot of djs i think uh i think it's all clout driven right so if you have a lot of clout you're going to get a lot of bookings and with a lot of bookings that means you're going to you're a big DJ. But in reality, I think it goes with ticket sales. No, that's reality. Right? That's reality, bro. Dude, all the big artists get in their headlining shows at the Palladium. Um, at these bigger venues, dude. They're bringing people, bro. And, like, that's, like, the similarity between the headliners and the supporting acts, dude. Like, it's just, uh, you can see it right there, like, on, uh, on paper, on the flyers. Like, Ticket sales, dude. Like, these venues, like, yeah, you could come up to these venues and be like, I want to throw a show. Yeah, all right, cool. You want to bring out Sun and Death? All right, cool. Kind of fill up the venue. Like, that's what they're worried about. And that's the only reason why certain artists are not getting booked for certain venues because they just, like, it's not to say that because they're not playing these venues. They're not dope. It's just that the ticket sales is what really factors in. Uh, if you're, if you're, in terms of, like, making moves, right, like, playing all these bigger venues, yeah, dude, ticket sales is, like, it's definitely the indicator uh, for success when it comes to playing shows and all that. And even think about it this way with ticket sales, with like those big, uh, um, with those big venues and stuff like that. Why would they let someone who doesn't sell out rent out their place when they could sell it to someone else that does have that many more ticket sales? And they'll probably get a more profit from that night because of the ticket sales. Like and ticket, they got reports. exactly. So it's it, it's like, in, in all actuality, like this all comes down to how much you could sell, how much you could, how much people want to come and see you, how much people want to leave from their home, bro. Like, how comfortable are you at home, fam? I'm pretty fucking comfortable when I'm at home. I'm not gonna lie. I could be at home. I could be in my studio. I could I could have some good weed on me. I could have some good drink on me. I could just be producing and I could be chilling, dog. I could be DJing in my I'm cool with that. You feel yeah. me? But I go out because some of these people are amazing, fam. Some of like these shows are amazing, dog. And you want to be that, right? You want to be one of the reasons why people leave their houses. Like they, they've been, like they've been, like like yeah. You want to be the artist where, like the minute it hits Monday, the show's Saturday. Like they just can't wait to Saturday to see you, bro. Like they're just talking about it. They're blowing up in the group chat. Like hey, have you guys gotten your ticket already for this show? Cause we gotta go. Like you want to be that artist that's playing at the Hollywood Bowl. And the only way that you're gonna be able to do that is proof of concept. And the proof of concept is are you able to pull all these people consistently. Uh, or, or every show that you've been, are able to pull like all these consistent numbers and, you know, doing all these events, collecting the reports of the attendance uh, from every venue that you work with. Are you able to have that on file, show it to the promoter, show it to the venue that, hey, these are the recent numbers. And honestly, like that's how you want to win a promoter's heart, show them the numbers. That's like your attendance, like how much you could pull. Like, and honestly, just that's just talent aside. The talent, like it's. It, that's honestly a lot, very important, but a lot of the promoters don't see things like that. Like, if, like I said, like I said, a lot of times it's cloud driven. A promoter can be bamboozled by the cloud uh, image that they see on social media. Like, oh, it's just popping on social media. So if we book them, like we could expect to have a, a, a good attendance. But sometimes they don't want to provide the, uh, the reports of attendance or whatever, the proof of concept. And they have the show and the artist... Uh, doesn't do as expected. Doesn't bring as many people, and so that's why uh, nowadays, especially like myself, that's doing shows with low end. Like I would definitely trust uh, someone on the other end of that email showing me like numbers of the recent shows with ticket sales and all that. Then someone that's just like, oh well, just put, just bet on me. And I'm not saying that they may not be wrong, but it just comes down to the comes down to the point of evidence and proof of concept. But and like, it's an investment too to throw in a show. So it's like. In the, uh, in the words of the, this one movie actor, he was like, I got to protect my investment. Oh, it was the mummy. That's right. 
Yeah, the mummy. Um, and I have and I've done like bookings where I've taken a gamble on people. Like they don't provide stuff like that, but it's cool, you know. Like uh, sometimes that's not the deal breaker if you don't got reports, but it definitely really helps. That really helps to show the venue owner, the person that's in charge of bookings, and be like, hey, I've done like these past three, five shows, and this was the attendance, and we believe that we could uh, get this building filled up and pretty much show them the documents, show them the content that you've been building up, your social media. If they can see that you have a fan base, uh, you're engaging and all that, uh, it's a safer it's a safer bet that they'll go with you. Facts. And just... Relating it back to the whole comedy EDM thing, like, or DJ's producer thing. Um, I just like how they know that shit and they're up, up, up front. Let me ask you this, though. So you were talking about how sometimes, like, uh, when you go to a comedy show, their times get pushed back and stuff like that. So uh, when you go to a comedy show and, like, uh, especially... Um, open mics or like especially a place like a comedy store where it's its main focus is comedy uh you hear a lot of comedians say i got bumped and i got bumped means that put it this way how would you feel and this this is what i'm trying to trying to say right how would you feel if uh you got booked for a um space yacht show right and your set time was supposed to be uh, 12 o'clock, right? But then they're like, oh, hey, bro, uh, actually, we might we might have to push your setback, or we're pushing your setback. Sudden death is here. <laughs> I know. How would you feel about that shit? I'd be like, that's just whack. <laughs> like, you told me I was playing at 12. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> hey, no, uh... I have come across podcast clips where uh, people are talking about like, yeah, dude, like it'll happen where if the, if even the venue owner knows like you don't really do that well with attendance, or even that's just for the fuck of it. Even if you did well, even just because so and so is in the building and he wants to do a quick fifteen twenty, they'll just do supporting acts like that, bro. Just because like, oh, maybe uh, I mean this is just like in theory. Oh, Dave Chappelle walked in, or Joe Rogan walked in, or uh, or D T D walk in, you know. <laughs> so, uh, nah, but that's just. Uh, I was just playing with that, but, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So that's what it means. So, like, I, I, I got bumped. They, they put me on a later set time because now the original time that they had me for, they went with someone else type shit. Ah, oh, damn. Ah, oh, dude, I feel, ah, oh, dude, I mean. Because, <laughs> look, 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 look. I have two takes on this. I'm doing the bumping. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, in terms of like, oh, there's someone in the building. In terms of like the entertainment aspect of everything, I get that aspect. But in terms of like, you told me that I'm performing at this time and you're not giving it to me. You're not honoring it. Even though you could even still make this person pour, perform after me. You you decide to still give that person my set time and bump me and. I, I wouldn't feel too right about that, to be honest. And I've, and that's happened to me. And I'm not going to lie. In the past, I kind of brushed it off because it wasn't really drastic, you know, shit. It was just like, oh, you're getting bumped ten, five, ten minutes late. So it wasn't nothing too uh, crazy consistently like that. But, I mean, no, I mean, that it sucks too because a lot of times you even tell your people that, oh, you're playing at this certain set time and, like, they're, like, waiting for you to play at that time. So it's like, even when you have to, like, tell your people or like your people's like now expecting you to play it an hour later it's like oh it's kind of like a bummer like we're trying to see you at the time that you've been like hyping us uh you're telling us you're playing and yeah bro i don't know it just wouldn't sit right with me dude like just have that food play after me or have her he she they you know they, they can't they're only here for a couple hours and this is the only time that that they're able to pop in and honestly this 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 event company where this is the reason we did this for people to be able to just hop back in and come when they want and dj well that's what i was saying like when uh, i had that other take where it's like in the entertainment aspect like that's what makes a lot of those shows uh Legendary. real cool so that's why I, I i can see why just like the average comedian that doesn't understand the entertainment aspect of like like just making shit like real cool i feel like they understand but it's just like a bummer, bro. Yeah, it's a bummer. 
you know, um, yeah, I know it's a bummer for sure. Like, I've been bummed about shit like that too, you know? Like, like you'll, you'll hear it in their voice. Like, they understand it. They'll be like, damn. Fucking Tony Hinchcliffe took my set. But they said the name Tony Hinchcliffe. Like, it was, you know, Tony Hinchcliffe. So it's like, they understood it while they were saying it. But it was just, uh, they don't dislike that person per se. But it's just, uh, why do you have to be me? You know, that's everyone's sentiment, right? Why do you have to be me? Well, I'll tell you what, bro. What, with Lowen, well, there's been times where we had to, like, uh, delay set times. I, I've felt, like, pretty bad about it from the, like, personally from the promoter aspect of it. Because I just know, like, as you know, sometimes it's a hassle. Even if it's, like, a big drastic, like, 45 bump or an hour bump. Like, it's just like, oh, like, maybe they already told the people, like, they're playing this time. Or they're expected to play at this time. And maybe a lot of times they prepare their playlist for according to a certain time or whatever. It's like, uh, uh, you know, I feel like a bump for sure can maybe mess up, like, uh, the flow of what DJs might play. Depending on the time that they're giving. Because I know a lot of times that comes into play, like, the mindset of a DJ. Like, oh, Okay, I'm playing this set. I'm playing this time. So maybe I should be playing these type of songs. So uh, I can see a lot of that happening uh, with bumps <clears throat> happening in shows, uh, specifically for like EDM shows. But um, yeah, I mean, you think, okay, so about tonight where we're going to the comedy store, you think that could possibly happen where someone's scheduled uh, to do a bit at 12 and maybe Dave Chappelle pops up and boom, fuck it. All right, uh, you're going you're gonna to play at 1230 now. Or you're going you're gonna, to... To sign up now for 12.45. We got Dave uh, for 12 now. So, um, you know, I listen to a lot of comedy podcasts. And uh, brothers, and these podcasts are based out, and they always talk about the comedy store. And you, mo nine times out of ten, when uh, the podcast I'm listening to, talking about, like, oh, I went to the store, and blah, 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 bumped me, or blah, 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 came in. They're talking about the comedy store. And uh, so this is like a common thing where uh, even during, say, you were throwing a show in one of the rooms, right? Okay. Uh, it's not uncommon for someone to walk in and come in on your show and just chill with you or fucking uh, just, you know, like uh, barging on your show and be just, you know, it, it's, it happens more, more more than it doesn't happen, I want to say. Oh, true. Skirt, skirt. <laughs> so, for the record, guys, I'm not really driving right now. This is all just CGI and special effects. We do really good um, ADR and uh, Foley. So, hope you guys enjoy, like, all the visuals that are going on. Yeah, man. Whoo, then we got Project Z tomorrow, dude. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, bro. We're going to pull up, like, uh, towards the ending hours of Project Z. We'll be at one of the lots giving out some stuff. So, uh, we're still going to keep uh, keep it mysterious where we're going to pull up, right? In terms of lots. Well, actually, I don't even know if we've already chose a lot yet. I think we're still deciding on that. Oh, uh, somewhere close to the entrance, though. So, come find us. Uh, we have some treats. We're going to be giving out some stuff right there at the NAS Center for the Project Z. Any hours. Out, actually, that shit was fun as fuck. Hope you guys enjoyed all our shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is coming out already after past tense. Oh, true, true. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that shit was dope. That shit was hella dope. Yeah, we had a great time. Uh, we all got home safe. Uh, it was it was fucking tight. The afters was sick. Uh, we got home 7 a.m. That's what I'm anticipating. <laughs> uh, bracing for impact. Uh, that's usually what. What's the right time to leave in afters, bro? What's the right time? What's the late time to leave? like? What time is it when the house owner is just like, you know what, bro? Like you're you've overstayed your welcome. <laughs> what time is that? You gotta bounce, fool. Um, so, I'd say. So look, West Hollywood just passed. That they're going to start serving alcohol until 4 a.m. now, right? And in New York, I believe it's 4 a.m. There, there's some states where it's, where it's had still been 4 a.m. So I'm saying 4.35 is like the latest you should really... 
six pushing it is the ladies who should be at an afters. There's no reason you should be there at seven, fam. If you're there at seven, you were trying to get some ass and didn't, or you were just too fucked up to leave. Word. Okay, okay. Have I stayed more past seven? Hmm. And the recent after parties? I'm wondering. Nah, I think I've left like around five, five thirty. Six almost pushing it. Yeah, I don't know. Nah, hey Paul, all right. What's what's a consistent after party environment? Let's see. It's usually we're all kicking it like in the living room. I feel like every time there's an after party. All of a sudden, a lot of these people have, like, those lights that, like, go around the room. Kind of like how we have our studio. Like, where you can have the Bluetooth. They can change the color of it. Um, for show, beer. Yeah, we definitely pull up with beer. You know, I recently just came from Vegas, and I forget that that's just 24-7. That you could just pick up beer 24-7. Like, over here in Southern California. Uh, or, or, or I guess just aside from West Hollywood, like... In California, 2 a.m. is the cutoff to get beer. I think at 6 a.m. you could go right back to uh, getting beer. <clears throat> but, damn, 4 a.m. in West Hollywood? Shit, so do you think clubs out there might, uh, are going to stay uh, open for two more hours till 4 a.m.? Uh, collect all this uh, extra money? Damn. Yeah, I could definitely see it happen, bro. Yeah, bro, I mean... I'll tell you what, bars make a lot of money from drinks, dude. And especially if it's West Hollywood prices, dog, those two extra hours, bro, that's like for sure like two, three months of rent just for those two extra hours, dude. Trust me, dude. Those drink sales, I've seen them, man. If you're going to be a business owner, I think uh, having a bar, aside from the headaches, I think it's a good business, safe business. If you don't know how to run that shit right. We have, we have good drinks, good prices, uh, you know, good bar food, good environment, good sound system, good staff, good security, um, good DJs, weekly residencies. Uh, I think it's a cool business to get into. But, yeah, you deal with a lot of drunks. You know, that's why, you know, let's talk about, like, the DJ live stuff, right? You were saying, uh, you know, doing a lot of gigs at bars and clubs. You deal with a lot of uh, people that are sometimes heavily like, intoxicated with alcohol. And sometimes they come off, uh, they, they sometimes are become distracting, you know, from your work. They sometimes, you know, bump into you or, uh, <clears throat> or they just like distract you from doing your work, right? Uh, dropping music or whatever the case is. Um, dealing with that a lot, bro, especially with like bar gigs. I know a lot of these out there that listen to this, they definitely understand what I'm talking about. Um, dealing with drunk people, bro. How have you uh, deal with drunk people, bro? Like someone coming up to you like, hey, man, it's just fucking, it's just turning up, bro. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, can, can I, uh, can I touch your gear? Like, you know, like, like what's your approach, dude? Are you, are you usually like, like straight, are you usually straight with them? Like, hey, bro, like I just need you to give me my space. Or you're like, oh yeah, bro, like you fucked up or what? Like, are you inviting with it? Are you more like repelling in terms of like, hey, bro, like I just need my space or. Uh. Bro, don't touch my shit. That's it. That's what I say. If you touch my shit, I look at you, straight face, don't touch my shit. It happens again. I, In my point of view, if you're close enough to me where I could reach you, it's getting physical. And then you're going to pay for whatever gets broken because you broke it, unfortunately. I mean, just don't, t- just don't touch the gear. You feel me? It's not yours. Uh... But with drunk people, like, uh, security, hopefully. Um, and if they're close, getting close, um, I don't know. I kind of just, like, walk to where they could only get so close to my stuff. Like, I, I block off their way to getting to my equipment. Like, I go to the corner of the table, whereas if they're going to enter, and I'll just stand right there before they get anywhere closer to my stuff and I'll just be like, oh no, yeah, you cool, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, just before it gets like any more sloppy and whatnot, I try to de-escalate it, obviously, but sometimes there's no no talking with drunk people, you know? Wow. Not for sure, bro. 
And you know what I've been uh, liking about the events that's been happening at the rooftop in downtown Riverside is that we can smoke at the rooftop, which I think is pretty cool. I feel like it gives that a little different vibe too. It balances out the vibe for sure. Because I definitely, with alcohol, is heavily consumed. That's like the only thing that people are taking in one event. It's prone to just get uh, for sure uh, crazy with people getting rowdy and whatnot. Uh, careless people getting careless you know uh people vomiting i mean shit uh, speaking of uh, vomiting i recently vomited <laughs> oh man we went to fucking uh legacy shit dude is that jägermeister bro see i i need to stop mixing liquor with beer i just need to stop doing that bro i, I gotta stop that's not your problem bro I could tell you what the problem was. What's the problem? Bro, you just got to stop drinking a whole bottle of Jaeger to your to the dome, fam. Just stop I doing that shit. I had it with the Boston. Bro, you, <laughs> took, you took a whole bottle to the dome, dog. I had it with the Boston. And every, t- I'm, like, every time that shit happens, it... bro, you started shuffling. That's how I know you were fucked up. <laughs> I was like, oh, fuck. My boy getting it. He fucked up, but he getting it. Yeah, nah, I mean, hey, shout out. Be- people throw out sometimes. Uh, what you been messing with, Robert, in terms of liquor? I, I, I mean, I, I'm not sure if you're drinking nowadays, but like, if you had to choose like, what kind of liquor you've been messing with, are you a whiskey type of person nowadays, uh, tequila, vodka? What, what is it you, you be drinking when it comes to alcohol? Um... I guess my go-to is tequila, for sure. If I have to drink something, it's going to be tequila. It just goes down quick and smooth, I guess. Pause. Um, honestly, though, it, it just depends on who I'm with. Because I'm not trying to kill the vibe with no one. Uh, I'm down to drink whatever you're down to drink. Whatever's going to turn us up more. Let's do it. I'm down. Uh, but I, re- I don't drink. I, I really don't. I mean, I do. That's cap. I drink, but I don't like to drink hard liquor. I'll do like a beer, maybe two beers, and I'll be straight. I'm not really trying to drink like that anymore just because I'm just trying to get a little buzz, take the edge off, and then call it a night. Because anything more than that just doesn't make sense to me anymore. It decommissions me for the next like morning, and I like waking up in the morning, making some coffee, smoking a blunt, and then start going to do shit i like that's like my morning process i like doing that so anything that stops me from doing that i don't want to do like point blank period so drinking too much fuck that unless like there it's a reason bro unless we're celebrating you know unless it's like a good reason why we, we out here drinking like like bro like like tonight bro it's like my um my 178th hair fell off uh this month yeah okay. it's only been a day so i've been counting so let's celebrate All right. <laughs> and then tomorrow bro well you know it's saturday so we gotta celebrate for saturday and then well sunday bro you know it's a sunday fun day type shit so i mean that that's a celebration all on its own and then monday is my birthday bro so we just gotta keep keep going and then tuesday I wanted to go to like this Japanese place in uh, or Koreatown in LA and pick up some manga and shit and then celebrate. Cause you know, like, bro, when do I ever go to Koreatown and shit? So I'll probably drink then too. Uh, I'll probably drink Wednesday just cause like after work, after I get through like a hard day, especially Wednesdays, I can celebrate. So I'll drink then too. Um, Thursday, I don't really celebrate because it's just Thursday. Unless I'm at a low end event, you know, which. It's been pretty much every Thursday. Oh, yeah, no, oh, so another celebration and um you know what? You be drinking, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh hey, uh for sure when it comes to shows, rays, festivals, like drinking, like the atmosphere, uh the tendencies, like the temptation to drink, uh it could be hard to combat for sure. I can see how one person that could be sober, 
I like may not drink as much. Like start hanging out with a group that's, um, you know, has that behavior. So like, oh yeah, let's drink, let's shotgun, let's play BP, let's pregame. I can see how slowly and surely uh, a lot of those sober people can morph into those people. Now they're drinking. Now they're getting messed up and. Uh, it, it's hard for sure, and especially I, I I could definitely feel for like a touring artist or just like an EDM, uh, or performer, just anyone in the entertainment industry, um, and it's just going out and about trying to stay sober. Where like entertainment industry that they're in, um, you know, alcohol is one of the things that's thing in the surroundings, whether it's at a bar in the green room, um. You know, I applaud for people staying sober. Like, I, it's, it's, I'll tell you what, it's kind of hard for me to not have a beer when I, I'm just like in the green room. Or I'm just like at a show. Like, it, cause, cause for me, it's just like a beer too. But for some people, they could just be like, no, I'm good on water all night. And like, I really applaud them because I know like sometimes it's a, the temptation to drink and take the edge off. Like, it's, uh, it's tempting. Uh, Cause I know it's something for me too, trying to just not have a drink. Uh, but I'm like, fuck it, like one drink, I'll get a little cool buzz. I get the edge off, and now, now we vibing. Uh, I like that feeling, so I, you know. And it's sometimes it's just one, two drinks, or sometimes it's five or six drinks, and I applaud. Or sometimes it's the whole Jaeger Buster body, you know. I applaud all everybody, man. That's uh, not drinking uh, during all those like in. Uh, scenarios where they're out and about playing shows uh, at a bar, at a party, or just anywhere where it's just uh, there's drinking involved constantly. I mean, I applaud you guys because it's, it's personally for me, it's 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 definitely challenging because I, I like to drink, and for me not to drink like some beers that I like, like uh, like a Dos Becky's, aka Dos Equis, or or Pacifico, you know, or a Michelada, you know, I'm like damn, like. But, you know, uh, to each their own, you know, uh, live your life the way you want to live it. Yeah, definitely. And that goes into, like, what DJ lifestyle is. You're going to be exposed to a bunch of alcohol. So being a DJ, if that's something you want to do, being a touring artist, uh, producer, EDM producer, you're going to be in a bunch of venues that's constantly promoting alcohol. <laughs> like, it, you're just going to be around it. So... You got to find a way to combat it. Uh, water. Always keep water in your hand. That definitely helps me. Having a water in my hand uh, helps with the temptation of, I need a drink. I, I don't need a drink if I have water in my hand. I'm not thirsty. <laughs> you know? Uh, but yeah, that, that's definitely part of DJ lifestyle. Uh, I want to keep, like, going back on lifestyle for, like, producers and DJing just because... Um, I feel like there's a lot of things that we deal with that maybe you don't necessarily think about, uh, but it's part of lifestyle and it's difficult sometimes. And um, so, like, uh, let's let me say, let one easy example: sleep schedule. Like, it's being a DJ, your sleep schedule is so fucked completely fucked dj producer fucked you bro like personally uh i'm not one to wake up and go straight to my doll and be like i'm a produce um i need to wake up i need to get up wake up feel awake get inspired a little maybe listen to some shit and then be like all right i'm ready and uh sometimes that shit doesn't come until nighttime when I should be going to sleep. So think about it like, say I only DJ weekends, right? So Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday I'm DJing, right? Uh, and I theoretically I'm not getting home to like 3.34 if I'm disciplined, right? Because uh, I got to pack up and I got to drive home. Packing up is a bitch. Um, so yeah. And then I'm not probably waking up till like 10, 30, 11. I, I wish I could say I'd wake up earlier, but you're probably not. And you're probably going to feel a little drowsy, especially if you had one, two drinks, three drinks. 
Like it's gonna toll. It's gonna it's gonna have a toll on you. And then waking up and then feeling like ah, I can produce, like or not even having like the the feeling of I have to, but the feeling that I want to, but I feel like shit, or I don't feel like super like a hundred percent. Because honestly, I feel a difference when uh, my body, my sleep. My mental is at 100. Like, when I've had a couple days off and I've had good sleep, I've eaten good, everything's not... I don't have, like, a bunch of shit on my mind. That's when I feel like I produce the best. Like, when I'm just, like, level-headed, like, shit just goes right for me. And that whole sleep schedule, like, I, I can't... I can't just have a regular wake up at a certain point, go to sleep at a certain point because inspiration hits at different times. You feel me? Like, inspiration doesn't doesn't hit uh, at lunchtime when uh, I have time to produce. You done? Uh, got you. Uh, so, yeah. So, like, that that's one, one factor that that's something that if you want to be a DJ producer... Something you really got to be on top of. Your sleep schedule will really fuck you over. Because uh, if you don't manage that shit, you're going to be exuding energy. You really don't have to be. When in reality, if you would have got good sleep, you, you would be just a little bit more ahead of the game, I think. But uh, there's other lifestyle things I really want to get into. We'll touch on it more in future episodes and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, DJ Lifestyle. All right, guys, we're going to cut this pretty short. We're about to arrive to our destination. Hope you guys are tuned in with us or following our page.